All right, I'm Jeff Berg. I'm the computation lead and uh, lead developer at Positive Energy. Uh, Positive Energy was started by Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill as a net zero sustainability for the built environment. Um, and what I'm charged with is figuring that out, basically, is, is taking the mission of the company and, and making it real. Um, what we found in that, in that mission is that we need to get in on the process, the design process, at the very first stage. You can't wait until after the, the planners have, have done what they want to do with the site. We need to be able to give the planners insights uh, about their uh, designs uh, as they're designing. Um, and so th there's, there's software out there that can help them do this, but it's not very fast. Um, and so what we've built um, is parametric software. Um, and when I say parametric, I mean it takes very little input to get very interesting insights and actionable uh, output from the system. Um, collaborative um, is really, it's, it's web-based. You can, you can have stakeholders in Russia, China, Chicago, um, work together and look at the same model and see the same exact results um, that the model uh, outputs. Um, I'm just going to jump in and show you what the, uh, the software does. Um, this is actual, this is, it looks like screenshots, but this is actually running. So if anybody actually wants to see this running, come see me afterwards and I, I'm happy to show you uh, what this is. Um, so what you see here is the, the 3D uh, model pulled in. Um, the 3D model was created by urban planning team. Um, and we wrote a, a connector in Rhino that allows the, the model to be output into a very small mesh that we can display on the web. Um, that was probably one of the biggest problems we had to solve right away was that the, the models that we were getting from planners were beautiful. You know, they, they're full of detail and very pretty because that's what they do. They want to impress their clients. Um, and so we, we did some decimation on the mesh, mesh and we said, hey, we can do this on the web. Um, so once we got there, we said, give us, give us what, you know, tell us what you want to do. And the urban planner that we worked with, he wanted to show three scenarios for this particular site. Um, I can't say where this is, but this is a real site, and this was a real um, client engagement that this was used on. Um, the first um, section here is where the scenarios are chosen, and the scenarios really change, in this particular case, change the square meters um, that is available to um, the, the developers. Um, and you're going to see that change. So keep an eye on this, this section right here. Um, when I go to the next slide, um, we've gone to the, the third um, scenario, and we have more massings in here. And we also see that the, um, the software has rerun the calculations for energy and carbon on there. So right away, the urban planner could just load up the, the model into the software, and they have answers almost instantly. Um, about the, the, the energy and carbon usage for their, um, for their design. Um, so you can choose different uh, topics to look at. So we have program type, carbon, um, energy consumption. Um, we even have transportation. I'll get to that. Um, we can tell you what, based on the, the design parameters, we can tell you what the, um, the, the makeup is on the program for the, for the entire site. So you can see in this case, it's primarily residential. Um, so we get results really quickly. Um, you can see here, there's a graph here of the, the actual carbon data. Um, and when you mouse over that, so if you moused over this one right here, you would see this particular building light up. So you can match uh, what you're seeing on the graph to the particular buildings. Um, on this slide, what we've done is we've actually um, clicked on this building, and this has opened the building editor. Um, so the planners can go in and without having to um, redesign the model or anything, they can redefine the building. So they can increase the floor area ratio. Um, they can also change from residential to like a hotel. Um, they could change it into a parking garage, and we will rerun the numbers on there. Um, so in this case, you can see that we changed it this particular building to a hotel from a residence. Um, and that had an effect on the, um, the output numbers there. Um, the other concern for this particular site um, was there, this area right here was um, a, a sensitive area. It's a religious um, center. Um, and we could not um, allow the buildings to really impinge on that, that site. Um, so one of the concerns was, what does the shadows do? Um, what does the lighting do? So this software is also capable of very simple shadow modeling uh, within there. Um, 
Uh, so that was, that was kind of an add-on that we, that we had fun uh, putting in there. Um, this is the transportation, um, and this is where things got a, a little interesting. Um, this is where things get really parametric. We got parametric when we, when we made the, the changes to the buildings themselves, and we were able to, to re-output um, the results. Um, in this case, we're actually pivoting the entire application. So before, uh, what was driving the application was the, the definitions of the buildings, the programs within it, the occupancy rates, the ASHRAE standards. Um, once we click on transportation, we are now pivoting the application to say, okay, now do those same calculations, but from a transportation perspective. Um, so we're not so focused on what the independent and dependent variables are um, within the application. So we're really able to start tackling problems from many different directions um, in a, a connected, connected way, um, which is really important when you're thinking about the urban environment with um, connected systems um, and how they affect one another. Um, so in this case, we calculate um, the actual trip demand. Um, so we know the occupancy rates of the buildings. Um, and th these, these right here are the roads coming in. Um, and we were constrained to these two entry points because of the, um, the nature of this area. It couldn't be touched, so that no roads could come down through here. Um, and so we, we showed um, just really quickly, using a very simple model, um, what the load would be on each end. Um, and what we did was we have a, a maximum trip count, um, and it's too blurry to read it, but I think it's, yeah, it's 82 million trips uh, for the entire year. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to reduce it. And since we're now using these as our, our input variables, we're saying we have to reduce the size of the building. So I don't know if you caught that, but the buildings actually shrank here um, so that the, the urban planner can get an idea, okay, if we were constrained to 37 million trips, this is what I have to work with. Um, and this, w we can take these models, we can output them as um, OBJ files, and they can use them as ghosts within Rhino or whatever 3D modeling software that they want to use um, to reapproach the design. Um, so that, was, that tool was very successful. We, we, were, we were really happy with that. Um, the, the primary problem we saw with that was the fact that these particular models had to come from the urban planners themselves. And so we wanted to take a step back and say, well, well what can we do to make this process even faster? Um, like I said earlier, the, the further in um, at the beginning that we can get, um, the more potential there is for a, a sustainable design at the end. Um, and so we said, okay, we, we have this capability to convert models and bring the, import them into the application. Um, the next step is here, where we're actually building a, um, a tool, a 3D tool, um, right in the browser. Um, it's very simple. Uh, one of the um, applications that we're looking at for this is also civic engagement. Um, so the UI for this has to be very simple. We want to be able to give this to citizens of a neighborhood and say, okay, this is your neighborhood, how would you design it? And so it's very easy to come in here, just start creating massings, you select the center point, um, very similar to SketchUp, um, where you can select your, your center point for your map and it pulls in the map. Um, and then you can just use the tools to, to start designing and it's a very simple plot um, tool and it extrudes the buildings and once you select a building there's properties to change the heights and you can also change the program for the building just like we saw earlier. And so you can sketch right in here, right inside the application and get those, those energy results um, right away. With these and countless more tech advancements shaping the way we work and play, we want to hear what you have to say. Leave us a comment in the section below, check out all of our other videos, and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.